There we go. So, third time lucky. Hey guys, uh, <laughs> we've been messing around with the equipment here, but we're now ready to chat. Right, so right now we're at Radfest. Uh, this is the ongoing thing we got uh, today and tomorrow left. And we're going to be doing some more interviews. And right now we have Quantified Bob. You know Quantified Bob if you're a super fan of Quantified Body because he was in episode 22 talking about intermittent fasting and blood glucose dysregulation and his experiments and tracking around that. So we've met blood, uh, Bob and we've had a great conversation before. Um, so if you haven't uh, listened to that, you might want to go and listen to that before you re-listen to this and re-watch this um, because we'll just you know, cover new ground, basically, we're not going to go over the old stuff. So, Bob, how are you doing? I am doing great. So this is the third day of this uh, yeah, so event. Events, yeah. So, I mean, we've had so many conversations just over the last three days because uh, just seeing some of the talks about some of these advancements and, and some of the therapeutic um, work that's being done and around stem cells, and it's like, you know, going from, I think when I was on your podcast, was it three years ago or something like that? Recently, you know, and it was very group talking about, you know, on a very macro high level, it's about, you know, a certain dietary things and, all, and, and interventions and, you know, getting into maybe some data around like glucose tracking. But now we're getting down to like the cellular level and, and subcellular level and seeing just how rapidly these advancements are happening. And so um, it's really cool. Like, I, you know, I think we've, you know, just in those past few years, like we've gained so much additional knowledge and insights. It's like I look back at even when we spoke, and I was like, "Wow, some of it's actually kind of cool. It's relevant." Like we talked about yeah, it's telomere still testing yeah. and stuff, but then like there's a whole new wave of science and things that are coming out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what do you what have you thought of the event so far? Have you been enjoying it? What do you think of the great points of it? Would you recommend people come here? Or? Yeah. So I haven't been to this event before. That was my main you know curiosity about it. I, I uh, wanted to come last year, didn't, so I came this year. Um, I didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, I, I'm a long time subscriber of the Life Extension. You get the magazine, you, get, you know, you order some of their supplements and things like that. Um, it's a really cool, interesting crowd. I mean, there's a, a real sense of community around this. And, you know, when you talk about longevity, and it's not this, you know, this is even this conference is called, uh, it's like Revolution Against Aging and Dying. And I'm just like, Okay, so, you know, yeah. it's extreme. I'm like, I like to make it a positive. I, I, instead of saying a revolution against, I would make it like something for living longer and better and, you know, more productive lives. And But um, the talks have been great. You know, there's, I like conferences where the presentations kind of get into some of the science, um, instead, you know, not being like a sales pitch or anything like that. So I was, you know, we're getting to see some really cool talks. I, I'm actually learning some more. Like, I, you know, often I go and see talks. I was like, I've read about this. I've already read that and read yeah. that. And, and then, yeah, I'm coming away with the, from these talks with like notes and mental notes and things I got to go follow up on because it's like really, you know, piques my interest. Yeah. yeah. So I've also found that like just the quality, like the people we met here, um, you know, I've met so many cool people here. I've been talking uh, with people. We hung out with people last night um, from some of the startups that have been funded um, in order to, uh, you know, achieve some of these anti-aging or bring some of these anti-aging therapies uh, eventually to market. Um, so there's really interesting pe people here um, doing interesting stuff. So I think that's one of the great things of this. This is my first life extension conference. I don't know about you. Yep, same. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I was going to say was that what we're seeing is this like in the general idea, uh, the general space of uh, let's call it wellness and longevity, um, the overlap, because I'm running into friends and people like, I was like, what are you doing here? Like from like a, whether it's a, a quantified self conference or a biohacking conference or like Paleo FX conference, like all these worlds are just overlapping now, and it's it's really interesting. You're meeting the same people. Yeah, well, new people, but also you're seeing everyone's interests are cross pollinating. It's all becoming like around this whole concept of overall overall self optimization, and you know, and yeah. trying to be the you know figure out all the different ways to sort of you know make ourselves the best we can be. Excellent, excellent. All right, let's talk about um, what you've been up to since we uh, last spoke. So it's been three years. Um, what's the most interesting tool or tactic? Tested, or you, or you've used consistently because you actually see it's making a difference. Sure. Well, if you want to talk about just um, insights, and I, I feel like I, I've gone from again that that sort of macro level of really like you know tweaking my diet, trying to like heal my gut, and, and those types of tactics. And we talked about concepts like intermittent fasting, and and now you're seeing um, a, a proliferation of things like. Uh, Types of fasting protocols and fasting mimicking diets, and so you know we, we've both done a lot of uh, experimentation around that, um, which is which really cool, and, and, and digging even a little deeper. Um, I, I'm looking at things now more from, you know, 
ultimately everything we're doing kind of boils down to like, for me at least, I'm seeing it as mitochondrial health and my, you know and that efficiency. And so I look at tools and tactics and being like, how is that helping or hindering that? So whether I'm using a modality that you know reduces oxidative stress in my body or how I'm adapting my diet, it's all about how I'm making that as efficient as possible. And so I'm kind of it's kind of going from that like as you peel back every layer of the onion, you're going okay, what am I really honing in on there? You know and that, so for me, that's the, you know a really big part of it, and um, you know, in some of the tools, like you know, we talk about like wearables and getting data off of all that, I and mean, we've seen a big shift in that whole landscape where some you know a lot of companies a lot of long, companies gone they're yeah. gone, or the ones that were really open about letting you access data and have open access to it, or they're sort of siloing themselves off because they're trying to monetize it on their own, which has been kind of frustrating. Um, but now, like you know, three years ago, everybody was doing like twenty three andme testing for genetics, but now like whole genome sequencing is, is affordable. You right, so you know, we, we've seen a few companies talking about this, uh, the whole genome sequencing. Um, Little Liz Parrish is by Viva. Um, there's, you know, I'm doing the health nucleus, they're doing it, but there are other companies as well. I, I, I talked to someone yesterday and he was saying there's a huge, uh, there's a huge movement in China for this as well, like the whole genome sequencing. So it's, it's available now. Um, you know, and it's actually the whole thing rather than the 23 means just a s small part of it. So we're getting to that step where we actually have better data. Yeah, and, and it's one of those things where that whole genome sequencing just five years ago was like a million dollars, and now it's down to under a thousand dollars, let's say. And so, and then a year from now, it'll be what you were paying for a 23andMe test a few years ago. And yeah. so it's pretty amazing, you know. Yeah. And I think the fact that other people are doing this, that's going to help bring those costs down because they're all kind of competing in a way now. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I guess the other thing I liked about this um, here is its community. Like, you, you see these companies there competing against each other, like, you know, stem cell companies, they're, they're in the same area, so they're, they're competitors. But what you see here is everyone has a common objective, which is to be to defeat aging and to defeat the damage of aging. And they're working together a lot of the time in networks and in partnerships, even though they're actually competitors. So it's really nice to see that because, you know, they're focused so much focused on the objective that, like, I don't care who makes it. It's kind of like Elon Musk does, you know, he, he's like, I just want electric cars to be in the world, so I'm gonna open source all our designs and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'm even seeing, you know, the, the Life Extension Foundation, like they do, a, they fund a lot of, of research and, and, and they're funding companies that are essentially, yeah, they could be good as competitors, but they're like, it's, it's all, you know, they're gonna get some innovation over here and they're gonna get some innovation over here and eventually that will start coming together. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see. Um, I'm also seeing, you know, it's, companies are getting funded and, and it's yeah, money, a lot of funding, I mean, right? institutional yeah. money, like big money, and I was like, wow, it's like, Right, so we saw uh, the SENS Research Foundation yesterday, they had um, Y Combinator, as a, well, a part of Y Combinator had invested in one of the companies uh, targeting aging, and uh, Andresin Howowitz, you know, so these are huge names in the VC uh, incubator, incubator world. Yeah, I mean, they, they, I think they all see where this stuff's going, and, and they're putting their bets down now on some of these, some of these players, and so, you know, I, I'm, I come at it from, you know, I have a technology background, I'm an entrepreneur, as, as are you, and, you know, so it's interesting to, to watch how that all plays out, because, um, you know, some of these are areas that maybe were, those investors were more risk averse to a few years ago, and now they're seeing, you know, there are studies and they're seeing some glimmers of, of hope there, you know, in, in terms of like, wow, this stuff, they're really onto something, so there's money going in there. Um, so for me, it's about, okay, I want I want those companies to be successful and get funded so they can make these things available to me, yeah. <laughs> like at an affordable cost, right, right. And, and, you know, um, and that's, yeah, that's been exciting. But back to your original question about, you know, what have we been up to the last few years, I mean, yes, I mean, gone through a lot. I mean, like we talk so about what where are you doing in a typical week now? Like, what, what, like you get up yeah. in the morning, like, you know, like what does a typical week look like now in terms of, you know, the tools, the tactics, the tactics and, and the tracking? Yeah. So I look at it from the standpoint of no matter who's, you know, one person say they're more optimized or whatever than the other, it really comes down to we all have 24 hours in the day. And how am I going to make the most of that time? So I, I've been fortunate, I, I, I've kind of done a lot of this, like, like work in terms of you know, collecting some of my data, looking at data, I'm not doing it all all the time. There's moments where like, I might do continuous glucose monitoring for a period of two weeks, but I'm not always wearing that sensor because I got my insights over those two. I maximize the time I'm wearing it, do get my insights, and maybe uh, six months from now or a year, I'll you know, use it again. So that and it, so that's not like a burden on me. Um, I try to passively collect as much data as possible. So you know, even if I'm not using it, I might not be using it today, but if I want to go back and look, like what was it six months ago? What actually happened back then? The data is there. It required no effort on my part. I mean, I spent a lot of time a few years back setting up some systems and tools, and now it's very much like a set it and forget it kind of thing, where I can be on autopilot to some degree. Um, you know, uh, just you know, that's 
what I'm seeing now, even on the consumer side, is the frustrations where like they're they're getting access to their data and tools, but there's really no the insights they're getting is, are not like, so like you might say like oh your sleeping your sleep is terrible, but um, hey you know your sleep's bad and they're like I know my sleep's bad so what should I do and they're not really being given that next step of um, tactics and tools of what they could be implementing and what there could be a whole slew of it, of issues related to why their sleep is poor you know and really digging into that um, you know things like uh, training and recovery uh, are like I I've been really big on kind of exploring some of these like. Uh, devices and tools and modalities that help us, you know, instead of going to the gym six days a week for three hours a day, like you're literally just, you know, 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there and be on with your day and you're going to get just as much result out of it. You know, it's not about who can work out the longest and, you know, and, and you're even like push the most weight. It's like there's more efficient ways to do it. Um, you know, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, supplementation and, and you know, experimenting with, with different things, whether it's you know, nootropics or just you know, making sure I'm getting proper nutrient balance in my diet. You know, I, I've definitely cycled on and off things. Like right now, I'm three months into taking this uh, uh, nicotinamide riboside product that is uh, basically a precursor to NAD. Um, you know, basically allows the body should be able to convert this in, into that. And you know, the, I'll be getting some blood drawn uh, shortly um, to see like has it shifted, has it increased my levels, am I much, you know, from compared to like what someone at my biological age, let's say, would, would have. Um, and you know, I, I don't. In terms of like, is it something that I'll be taking long term? I may not need it. It may be the result is, you know, your actually your, your body doesn't need that additional supplementation. Maybe if you were at a, a certain a different state or condition or older, then it would be like, okay, maybe you know, maybe ten years from now you should consider starting to take it. But um, but, so, but you know, I was seeing some just other you know observations with it, like uh, it had a, like a slight shift to my circadian rhythm. Like I was waking up about thirty minutes earlier a day, but not exhausted. Just it just seemed like make me want to wake up earlier and, you know, that was, and and recovery from workouts and training definitely was a noticeable uh, effect of it but you know that's just like one sort of experiment uh, did a lot of been doing a lot of stuff around like cognitive testing and understanding like how to but tools that can help measure and assess whether you've got acute trauma or past trauma in your brain or fatigue etc and and then what can you do or take to what helps or hinders that because um, I had actually thought you know I assumed playing sports for years and st getting hit in the head repeatedly, <laughs> like, I'd have some issues. And But it turns out, like, some of the tactics I guess I've been doing over the past few years have kept my, my I guess, brain state at a pretty good level when I did the assessments. It was actually, like, you know, I'm not say disappointed, but I was, like, because it was, like, everything was, like, really good. They were, like, you don't really need to make any changes or just keep doing what you're doing. Um, so we're seeing these, like, cool assessment tools and devices that are coming out of these labs and, and you know things that maybe are used by professional sports teams or the military and they're being made accessible to, to basically anybody and, um, and and part of what I've done is I, I have all these sort of you know different types of training and recovery tools and and about six months ago myself and another person set up like a facility in New York City because um, I was realizing friends were coming over to use a lot of the, the things I had you know because I'm like instead of me just eating the cost of like one of these devices, I was like letting people get some benefit out of it. And so I said, why not just put it into a space and let people come and, and you know share it, share it, you know, without having to come in my home, let's say. So it's been fun. It's almost like a little part gym, part lab, part um, playground, you know. Yeah. And so I, that that for me is really exciting. And you know, and from a business standpoint, it's you know, it's really I just use it more as a place where I'm collecting data and I'm, I can do some really cool experiments around training and recovery. Figure out how I can use these tools to affect, you know, baseline biomarkers and things like that. Yeah. Is there anything consistently you collected and, and do daily or at least weekly over time? Yeah. The the daily my routine would be like um, wake. Uh, so as soon as I wake up in the morning, before I even get out of bed, I I do a heart rate variability check. So about a two minute uh, check. It actually. Are you correlating it with the aura? Uh, yes. They don't correlate. So the aura, this is the new aura ring. So overnight while you're sleeping, it's, it's taking heart rate variability readings throughout the evening. And so, and then it gives you an average score, uh, an average um, you know, number for, for overnight. The, for the night. For, you know, and it, and, and it will vary. Like, it gives you the peak as well. Yeah, so like you might go from a really low sympathetic state to a parasympathetic, but it's just gonna average it all out. So it, you may have had a really poor night's sleep, but there could have been a part where you had really high HRV, like good HRV, so it, it, it hides the fact that you had a poor Whereas when you wake up in the morning, if you had trained really hard the day before, or you're jet lagged or something like that, you might see like, yeah, it's, it's pretty 
suppressed today. Yeah. So, I, so I do view them as two important methods. Like they're different, but both important. They both give you a different insight into your, your physiological state. Uh, so, you know, so you go from that, you know, obviously sleep tracking, you can then start looking at the effects of that. And I layer that with other types of data. Like I, I look, if I'm home, I, I, I kind of understand my, my environment, my bedroom. So air quality, temperature, humidity, light, sound, all, all of that. And then, um, you know, things like body composition. So, I'll, you know, it's going to, you know, the scales are not the super most exact body impeding scales. You know, one day, you can't lose 4% body fat in a day. But if you just kind of blur your eyes and stand back and look at the trend over six months, you will see that the trend. And you can point out where, like, oh, yeah, look, I, I changed my workout. I was lifting a lot more heavy weights during that month. And you can see the changes there. Um, you know, glucose tracking, I'll do spot checks with like a finger stick if I want to yeah. just be like, um, hey, do a fa like you do a, uh, like a, a fasting reading, so you know, before you have any food or drink. Uh, ketones as well, you can do that. And then, I, you know, I'll play around throughout the week maybe if I actually want to see like um, glycemic response to certain foods, I, I can do spot checks with, with the, the finger stick. Um, you know, from a, from a ketone measurement, I, for a while I was even testing with like the strips, but then I, I think that works. I think if someone's more keto adapted, actually, it, it, it doesn't. It it might make you look like you're not in ketosis. You're not doing it. Let's because you're. A, oh, well, the urine, the strips, because um, your because body. About the urine. Yeah, because you won't be excreting it. If your body's keto adapted, you know this. Like, it, um, so yeah, some guys will. Yeah. So um, sure. Well, basically, like with ketones, there are, there are three ways to measure them. You can do blood, um, breath, or uh, or, t or these strips. It, it uses urine. And, and there are different proxies to basically your, your, your levels of ketones in your body. But um, you know, blood's kind of like the, the best way to, to really measure them. Um, like I, th I think you probably use the same meter. There's a meter that, will do both that I use for the glucose measurements and the ketone measurements. Uh, breath is an interesting one because it's, 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 it's using acetone from your breath. But there's a huge mark. I, I can't get it to get consistent readings because. So, I'd, yeah, so I, I'm, well, I've got like some PhDs looking at devices we have for tracking breath ketones at the moment. Um, very, very tricky uh, to use. So we're really evaluating them whether we should continue or not. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll, we keep on digging to try and, because it appears that the meter actually measures other things and that can interfere with, you know, basically you're getting a combined reading of acetone and something else. Yes. Um, and depending on what you've eaten or your gut bacteria, potentially you're getting a signal and you think you're in ketosis. But yeah, so but even even the, the force of your breath it is not super consistent. It's it's really hard to control. Yeah, and so the blood ketones actually go down over time as you get more keto adapted. So mine have, have gone down not not hugely by about one millimolar. So I used to be like like maybe nearly four sometimes in the afternoon. Now I'll be more like three or even like two point five. Wow, that's really yeah. that's really good. Because <laughs> I, I mean I, I don't I don't I, I I'm not going to say my diet or anything is like a, a keto diet, but I through just my normal diet and of periods of like you know, we'll call it intermittent fasting I, I always wake up in the morning in a state of at least mild nutritional ketosis so it's you know it's fairly low mild but i can shift really easily into yeah. a, a higher state if i just you know fast for a day let's say or um or add you know without taking exogenous um, sources of ketones um because we yeah so i don't know if i mentioned i had done some experimentation with like pure ketone esters like and but most people are using like athletes will like tour de france cyclists are using these for like super big energy foods it's like um you use the ketone aid one there's a product called Ketone Aid, yeah, that was um, it's pure beta hydroxybutyrate. So like you, it is the worst tasting. Like it's 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 like rocket fuel. So you have to chase it with like a little bit of uh, mineral water or something, just because the taste it's like really crazy. Wash your mouth out. Yeah, but my testing. So I approached it from. I was like, all these athletes are doing and, and reporting on the benefits from athletic performance. And I was like, I want to see what it does with cognitive performance. And so I did an experiment around um, just a whole battery of brain. Sort of cognitive tests where I established like for two weeks I just got my baselines I got rid of any learning effects so the scores I couldn't yep. get any higher I was like I leveled out it's like I'm not getting any smarter <laughs> better or faster in my reflexes and I took and I took this product like a couple you know it's a very small amount but it's super super powerful and within 15 minutes so if you use a blood um, ketone meter they only go up to eight millimolars the, the yeah. upper limit I, I went it, you know it had a little error blew message <laughs> I blew through it so I over I, actually my body was Based on the dosage, I should have probably taken maybe yeah. half the amount. How did you uh, feel? You're just like, it's just a weird experience. Everything is brighter. Your mind is lit up. It's, it was like a really, I was, I was nervous for like a millisecond because I was like, what is, you know, I kind of feel the gear shifting, like, like our engines revving up. And, um, 
But then you're just like, whoa, this is pretty amazing. You're never, your brain is never getting that sort of just flood. I mean, it's pure beta hydroxybutyrate, like getting right into your brain. You're just like, wow. And so what are the results on that? So what you do is, because if you want to, we waited an hour before I did the test. So I took it and I you know, went off the, off the charts in the meter. Then we waited an hour, so it got back down to it in the range of a, it was around six to seven millimolar, was where I was in this like therapeutic kind of zone. And um, redid all the tests and, and, the, and the battery of tests. And every single one, I in, in, immediately increased in my scores over, the, over those baselines. I think some, like, the, and the, these, these are like tests, everything from working memory to uh, speed and, 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 and reflex and all these, like, it's a battery of things. And, but all the scores across the board went up as high as I think something like 35, 40%. I was just like, this is crazy. And I go, I go, this can't be, I don't know, maybe I got adrenaline going or something. But then the next, so then the ketones, you know, they only last, the window of time is four hours. Like, you know, they, you know, by the answer? Yeah, they, they tail off and you're back to normal. So the next day, I was like, let me go back and do them again with no, no esters. My scores, my baseline scores. So it was a temporary bump in my... Okay, so that's it. that's interesting, because another guy, uh, one of my friends in the UK, he got the Delta G one, which is the one that humans use, and he did a week-long test taking it every day. And it was similar, like the first day, like had all of the, how would you say, anecdotal, like I feel different and everything. Yeah. And um, the, the other day, it didn't, it didn't seem to make as much of an impact. Some kind of tolerance, or yeah, it was just, Oh, really? Well, I only took it. I didn't. I wasn't taking any of the esters until I. Got, I took them once, so it was almost like my. I was going from uh, zero. I went from zero to like. I mistook you. I, I you were taking it the next. No, day. no, I never took the like, esters. So it's not building your brain better. It's a temporary. It's a. It's a performance <laughs> enhancer. I would yeah. call it that. Bit. It's so, you know, it's very expensive. So I would, you know, I think for athletes who like, they're going to use it more often for performance. But if for, you know, if I'm going to go on like Jeopardy or something, maybe I'll pop it before I go on the show because I'll. Be a little bit more on top of it. So, I mean, this is what I do. If I'm going to do some speaking, or or something like that, or you know, I got some kind of cognitive task, I'll take uh, keto. Um, keto Kenner is my, my favorite, and um, from Keto Sports, those are the original uh, makers. And uh, yeah, that's I, I get these these kind of benefits. Um, I I really think it is. I've got to do this test. I haven't done the battery testing like you, um, but you know, I should do that because like just anecdotally, I've heard other people. And you can even compare, like, you can take other, you know, there's other nootropics and things, you can find, stack them against each other and see how you, your performance compared, you know. It's the best thing I've taken. Like, a yeah. lot of the nootropics, I, I really don't find they impact me. And often they have start affecting sleep if I take them chronically, and then so that, that destroys it all values right away. Yeah, and it's not a one-size-fits-all. I mean, I, I, mean I, I know what I don't respond to or respond to, and you're going to have a very different... Yeah, everyone's got, a, like, a different brain chemistry, so you've got to be really careful with that. Totally. All right. So we're gonna wind up because we've got other stuff coming. Yeah. Um, is there anything you haven't spoken about that's really cool, or like anything you want to say? Anything cool? Well, I think you know from the uh, the, the quantified aspects of things. I, I you know I, I do think there's some cool advances happening and some some of what we can be measuring today. Like I was just inside this event and I was getting my face thermal imaged, and they basically it's, it's interesting to see how technology is always getting married with like Chinese medicine and stuff. So we're always going back to these things that have been around, but they seem woo because you couldn't quantify them. And now you're able, you know, so imagine getting a thermal image, you know, like Predator, that movie Predator, you look like, you know, lit it does up. look like Predator. Yeah, and you're lit up so you see hot spots and cold spots. And so they did my face and they could sell it. I had just gotten, arrived off the plane and they could see like I had stuff, in, like my throat was all irritated. They saw my nasal passages were not done. But then they could map the Chinese acupuncture points and they actually showed like where I maybe had some poor digestion happening and stuff just by looking with a thermal camera. And I'm just like, wow, this is like cool. And like now that you can actually put this to data and and these are things that like quick spot you know it took literally 15 seconds to do the scan it's like a spot check. you stand in front of a camera a thermal imaging camera it provides the data um, you know I'm experimenting with other modalities that are you know coming from Europe or, or you know, stuff that was maybe from the Soviet Union that um, was used for athletes for years and um, it was definitely a, it was definitely a uh, you know it's cool to experiment with some of these Friends. things here yeah sorry about that. Um, so you know things. So things that get me excited. I mean, it, it's all about being able to learn <coughs> even more about ourselves in, in the least intrusive ways and, and getting actual insights out of this stuff. So I mean, for me, it's like you know I've definitely gone and tested lots of things. There's been a lot of you know dead ends and things where I'm like, this is cool, but is it something? Is it is, is the benefit worth it? Like, cause there might be things where I'm just like, 
is a hassle, and I'm not getting enough out of it. For a lot of it's like you do projects, you add stuff, you kind of retest it for a while, and then you eliminate, you start cutting stuff. And you, it's this constant process of like push forward, add some things, remove more things, you know, and to, to kind of get to this stuff that actually is worthwhile. Yeah, so like, you know, the, the analogy I make with like biohacking and self and quantified self is like, not all biohackers or types are, would call themselves self quantifiers. They're just gonna say like, I just, I'll try 20 things and I feel amazing. And I don't really care about isolating what, what maybe there's only one of those things that actually really contributed to it, but they're not really in, interested in isolating it. They're just like, I'll just do everything. Whereas on the quantification side, maybe they're like, well, instead of taking 20 things or doing 20 different things, if there's two or three I can do that I get 90% of the benefit from, I'll do that. 90% 90, 90 yeah. of the benefit with least effort is that sufficient. This is why it's really worth cycling off anything. You know, you yeah. just stop it for a month. Absolutely, yeah. In structure experiments, you always do like a, either an ABA test. Or well, it's repeat, right? I really find value in the repetition. Basically, you know, you cycle on, you cycle off, you cycle on, you cycle off, you cycle on. You do that those four times. And you, you can have a pretty clear signal. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and it's not like you know constructing. You know, we're all single subject experiments, so it's, you know you don't have to worry about the, the scientific rigor of like you're not in like, a, like you know, you're doing as long as you keep as long as it works for you. Yeah, who cares? It's like an n equals one. Like I mean, ultimately that's what we're out for. Um, so we're not doing science for for everyone. It yeah. may be useful as a case study for someone else to then go and do some science, but. The most important thing is it just actually works for us. So. Yes, no, I agree 100%. Yep. Okay, so where can people find you? Just a reminder, like where are you most active? Where would you tell people to Sure, out? so Quantified Bob, you can go to quantifiedbob.com. Uh, any social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Quantified Bob. Um, you can email me, bob at quantifiedbob.com. And, um, nice and, and, I'm, and, and the, the, if you're ever in New York City or want to start playing around some of these cool uh, tools and training and recovery tools, um, go to uh, optimal optml.co optimal .co, um, you can start seeing some some of the things I'm doing up there with some of the oxygen training and some recovery tools and that'll be be, be built out over the next uh, month or so excellent so, yeah. thanks for your time and uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing you at a number of events soon yeah yeah it's been great it's been so great hanging out with yeah. you reconnecting and, and um, looking forward to the rest of the event yeah so. yeah me too yeah thanks turn you guys off see you later